into, well, it's preparing. Uh, that now we're live. So I'm getting ready to throw this into the Coach Launcher group. If you're following on my business page, awesome. Welcome. If you aren't in Coach Launcher group, hop in Coach Launcher group. This gentleman uh, sitting beside me, not literally, but uh, in this uh, webinar, teaching, master, whatever, whatever uh, buzz name people want to call their stuff to feel better about it right now is Nick Peterson. And we're going to be talking about product productivity and profitability. And uh, I've been bugging Nick for a while to hop on and, and uh, explain this because it's brilliant. Uh, so just let me push this into my group real quick. And uh, we will definitely be taking some live Q&A. Um, how you doing today, Nick? I am doing well, man. It was, it was a little chilly in, uh, you know, I'm in California. It's a little chilly. It's the first That's time I've been chilly in, since I've been here. I was on a, an enrollment call with somebody the other day who was in LA and I was like, yeah, my friend lives there. He's telling me it's always beautiful. And he goes, yeah, it's about 35 degrees right now. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. It's been, it's been a little chilly and a little rainy. It doesn't rain here often, but we've been getting rainy. That's nice. That's nice for the whole fire thing. All right. Yeah. We got, we got a few people with us. Uh, I'm going to share this. I'm sharing it right now into the group. We got Artie Leary, our friend, Patrick McKeever, the bench coach. Um, Every program, every program he's in, he's just like, just such a great student slash teacher, Patrick. I love it, man. He's always pointing people a step ahead. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are live into the group. We're going to have a little bit of a lag. I'm going to click on this just so that I can um, answer any questions as they're coming in. Um Awesome. So can you guys hear us? We got Mike Van Pelt is here as well. Um, let me know if you can hear us. All right. Would definitely appreciate that. Uh, that's super helpful. And we are going to be talking about productivity and profitability. Nick, you shared, you shared this idea with me uh, and uh, some other people more than a year ago. I think that's like a year and a half ago that I remember you first talking about this. So you obviously had been unpacking it and working through it long before that. But it blew my mind, like for what I was doing in my own personal life, excuse me, and in my business, <clears throat> it, it was a game changer. And so I want to share it with everybody in the Coach Launcher group. I think new coaches, people who've been doing this for a while, they get it immediately. They're like, oh my gosh, Nick is speaking directly to me. He's in my head. I think new coaches are amazed to find out that the biggest thing that holds them, what the biggest thing that actually holds them back is. Yep. I think genuinely they think it's, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do the right things. I don't know how to market my coaching business. I don't know what to do on that sales call. And while that is like tangently part of it, there's something deeper going on. So I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you uh, going live with us and I appreciate you uh, jumping in and explaining that we are going to have some lot, some lag and that's cool. But uh, Richard Swiss is here. Monica shell. Thanks for letting me know. Artie says he can hear you. All right. You guys can hear us. That's awesome. Kyle's here. We got about 10 folks. I think that's enough, man. I promised we were going to jump right into the juice, Nick. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. Um, do it. So I talked a little bit about it yesterday, but the biggest thing that holds new coaches and probably all coaches or consultants back is themselves in one way or another. And as we're talking about productivity and profitability, you break this down in such a scientific mathematical way. It's almost undeniable how you can realize not only what your limits are until you deal with that, but how you can get past those limits if you actually deal with that. Yep. Um, would you say that's accurate? Yeah, there, there, there's multiple layers and we'll just kind of peel, we'll peel them back and work through them. Awesome. And I, I hope that I know, I know you'll be able to show visually kind of what's going on. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to throw up my, um, if everyone will just give me a moment here, I'm going to actually share my screen and throw up, onto the screen, um, my wonderful handy dandy um, doodle pad. So, because as you're walking through, I think it's helpful if people will visually see what it is you're talking about in terms of 
um, the numbers and the percentage of how much can go wrong or go right yeah. in your coaching business. Um, so as I'm pulling that up, Nick, do you want to just start kind of walking us through and talking us through how do you focus on this one thing yourself? Where do we fit inside of our business and how do we leverage ourselves for the most business? Well, that that's exactly, exactly the thing, right? Is <clears throat> how do we, how do we fit in our business? And that, that's a question and we can ask that. And, and there's, there's a problem with, with the English language in the sense that it's like, you know, it's uh, there's a structure that we follow that's very linear and the actual process of like a complex system is not linear. Yeah. Right. So we may say, where do we fit in our business? That's the language we use, but we think of ourselves as outside of our business, right? Cause when something goes wrong, we're trying to identify the thing that's wrong in that business over there. So the first thing is to understand that we're working with a complex system and we are right smack dab in the middle of that system. Okay. Right? What do you mean by work with a complex system? So for brand new coaches, um, they might, their idea of complex system, even mm -hmm. what complexity is might be different than ours. Cause we've been doing this for a while. Well, there's two, again, there's layers, right? There's detail complexity, which is what everybody thinks like, Ooh, that's really complicated because of the amount of details. That's not what I'm talking about in a complex system. I'm talking about dynamic complexity, which means I pull this trigger right here. And in this space, in this time, something happens, but somewhere else at another time, something else happens, right? We never really yes. do one thing. So we might do this thing and we see that this is the consequence and we feel like we've learned it. But if we don't understand dynamic complexity, then we're ignoring that thing that happened over there because of the thing we just did. And sometimes that thing comes right back around and hits us in the ass three months later. <laughs> right. So yeah. it's the, the best example I can give that I think everybody. Yeah, can you give us an example? Yo-yo dieting. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Right? Perfect. You starve yourself. That. You start looking better. Um, you, you know, and, and the immediate uh, consequence is, okay, well, I'm I kind of, like I'm hungry, but I look good and it's good. The long-term consequence is you're building this unhealthy relationship with food. Maybe your friends are uncomfortable. Your family's pissed off at you because you won't hang out and eat with them. Like that's dynamic complexity. It's, it's measuring what are the consequences of my actions, both near and far in time and space. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's the, the complex system. It just means... Uh, a simple system would be I'm trying to see what our screen looks like. Okay. A simple system is that you flip a light switch on. And as long as you have electricity in your house, your light turns on. Yeah. Not, you know, like it's pretty simple to diagnose what's to predict what's going to happen. You turn the light switch on here and it's not like six months later, somebody's going to call you because you pissed them off or whatever. Right. Right. Uh, a complex system is, it's just uh, biology, a business. And, and just so you guys know, relationships are complex systems. Yep. Um, you could say something, right? You could lie to somebody right now and make them feel better. And that is the short-term consequence is you made somebody feel better. Six months later, they find out you lied and now they're mad at you, right? So there's a dynamic component of time and space and consequence. Uh, fortunately, if we understand that we are part of that system, right? It's not, it's not that, oh my gosh, this program is broken or this program doesn't work or this technology sucks. The question needs to be, but my relationship with this technology, like what is my relationship with this technology and how am I potentially a like it's not working the way I want it to work. Is that me? Is that technology? Is it somewhere in between? It's just understanding that there is no relationship in your life that is independent of you. Right? Yeah. So your body is a complex system. Yep. I, I think comparing a light switch as a simple system is a great comparison. So let's talk about how is a new coaching business a complex system before we go into this? Oh boy. So think about 
let's think about filling a glass of water. Okay. Okay. Here's another another, another metaphor because people love metaphors. We think, right? Yeah, this is perfect. So we think it's a straight line. I am filling this glass of water, right? When we turn the faucet on, we think to ourselves, I am filling this glass of water. That is our thought process. It's very, very simple. Very similar to I'm turning this light switch on, right? Yep. The difference is you could, you could also say that the level of water is controlling my hand, right? Because when it, when it gets to a certain point, you're going to, it's going to change the direction of your hand. That's absolutely correct. Right. Both. A, yeah. Both are equally incomplete. There's actually a feedback system and this is yep. the complex system, right? Your intention of having a glass of water, right? Created this feedback loop of the, the lower the amount of water, the more you turn the knob and then the feedback comes back the other way. When you see the water filling up, you turn it the other way. Maybe you speed it up, you slow it down. A complex system does not work in a straight line. It works in loops. Yes. Right? It's feedback circles. Be the same way as taking a shower. Yep. And you're hardly aware of that. Oh, that's too cold. That's too warm. But the temperature of the water is actually controlling you and your hand and your brain as you're controlling the temperature of the water. And it's determined by your intention. Right? <sighs> How... How warm do you want this water? And that determines how much your hand controls a knob and the, the temperature of the water controls your hand. Now, imagine this. This is really the, this is the kicker, right? Yep. How hard is it generally to find the right temperature in the shower? It's not terribly difficult. We know our showers by now, right? Yep. Now imagine... And this is very, very, very important in a coaching business. Now imagine I went in and I tinkered with your shower and I gave it a 12 minute delay. It took 12 minutes for after you turn this knob for the effect to kick in, right? Yeah. If you don't understand that system. You're going to aggressively turn it up and down and up and down. And You'll every, never find. Right. And you're actually going to probably take way longer. And that's the problem with the complex system. Not the problem, but that's the <clears throat> realization of the complex system. Hence, it's complex. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if you're, if you're following us, just type in there, this makes sense. The difference between a complex system with its feedback loops determined by your intentions and a simple system. Like a sy simple system would be there's only one temperature of water, period. Yep. You turn it on because the hot is broken. All you get is cold water. That's all you're ever going to get. It's done. A simple system, there is very little, if any, ambiguity in response. Right. There's only two things that can happen when you flip your light switch on. It either turns on or it doesn't. But, yep. You know? Yep. Claudia says, makes sense. Donna says, makes sense. Okay. So Patrick says, makes complete sense, Monica. All right, good. So I think we're making sense, Nick. Um, mm -hmm. So let's put this in terms of a new coaching business or even a seasoned coaching business, because we've got people in here as well with a seasoned coaching business. And what does that mean to us? What is, so what does this mean and where do they fit in? Well, this means first of all, that if you think you're going to flip on a switch and, and Hey, I'm a coach now. And, and you start a new process and you think that, you're going to get the right temperature of water or the right level of water in your glass or whatever in the next 20 minutes, um, you're sorely mistaken. There are a ton of things that have to go right. Now, here's, here's where I want to break down this concept of system reliability, and then we'll circle back. Beautiful. Okay. I'll tell you why that's so important. Yeah. This is where I'm going to be doing numbers. Yeah. So just make sure I got the right numbers. <laughs> so now keep in mind we're talking about reliability. Okay. If you want a business or a relationship, if you want any, anything in your life, a car, you got a car, you want it to be reliable. You want to know when I turn my key, my car is going to start every time, right? When I have an issue, my husband or my wife will be there for me with like, you need to know when this happens, this happens. That's reliability, right? Now, the reliability of a system is a product 
of all of the components of that system. So just let's, first of all, nothing is perfect. Let's say if you're religious, whatever, God, Allah, whatever, that's perfect. So we're going to say that nothing in this world is 100% perfect. But the truth is the things that we've created as humans are pretty freaking close. Yeah. Right. Like we have created things that are 99% perfect all the time, which is incredible. It's amazing. If we take, uh, let's take, for example, let's say there's a component of our system that's 90% reliable. That's 0.9, right? 90% of the time it does exactly what it's supposed to do when it's supposed to do it. That could be, it could be that your car starts, light switch, um, whatever. So yeah, so 90% reliable. <clears throat> and then you have another component of the system that is also 90% reliable. Okay. So let's so do component one. And then, so this is still a simple system. This I mean, is not simple, but two components isn't very complex. Yep. Yep. Okay, so now you've got a second component. Yep. That's 90% reliable as well. And I'm just choosing 90 to keep the math simple. Yep. Okay. Now, 0.9 times 0.9 is 81%. It's 0.81. So you can see how we could extrapolate this out. And every single component you add, no matter how reliable it is, is going to make the system less reliable. So go ahead and add another component that's 0.9. Okay. So then we've got our third component. So we have now we have a we have a system. Point zero nine or point nine zero. Point nine zero, ninety percent. Okay. All right. So we've got a third component, or point nine zero. So now we've got. If I'm if I'm tracking with you now, we're looking at in your system, which is th still only three components, yep. which which is actually pretty simple compared to most systems. Yep. You got a seventy-two percent reliability. Point nine times point nine times point nine equals 0.72% yep. reliable. Because if I'm understanding you correctly, each component of the system, because it's not 100% reliable, the more components you have, the less reliable the entire system is. Yep, correct. Now, so hopefully that makes sense, right? And again, this is rounding. We could have done 0.99 and you would have seen the same trend. Every, every single component you add at 99% reliability, the overall system reliability will still decrease. Are you all, are you all tracking? Let me know if this is making sense. People are saying, yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. Okay. So first of all, the very first thing I'm going to point out, this is not what this is about, but I've done entire training. We've both done entire trainings on this. It should be crystal clear now that simplicity is greater than complexity. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Let's, okay. let's just, Let's just put that down. So one thing people do is they overcomplicate things. They add too many components. And it's not, here's the thing. It's not that more components means a lesser result. It means it is less reliable. Yes. That there is a difference, right? You could have a great result some days, and but like at the core of it, we want reliability. Yeah. That's really, you know. So simplicity is greater than complexity, simple because and we're, and we're just talking about systems right now. We are going to tie this into your coaching business. Yep. Plenty of ways. <clears throat> Don't worry about that, but you have to understand this. Simplicity, simplicity is greater than complexity. It doesn't mean that with simplicity, you get more return. It just means it's more reliable. Yes. It's more consistent, which is what you need, especially when you're first starting a coaching business. Absolutely. Right. You need to know that your income is going to be supplemented, right? Yeah. So we're just touching on that. When I first started my coaching business, it was super complicated because I didn't know what I was doing. So I was trying everything. So it was very complex. Then as I got focused and I started to get traction, it was because I made it very simple. Now mm -hmm. my coaching business is more complex because it has to be because of the amount of clients I have and the amount of fulfillment I do, but that's okay. It's just Whoa. not as simple. Yeah, we'll get around to that. We'll actually, I'll yep. actually explain when to add complexity because there's <laughs> like, when in doubt, just do math, you know? Hey man, thanks for being here. This is super helpful, super helpful for new coaches. Okay, so we're all with awesome. us so far. 
So Monica says, take me back to manufacturer days, overall equipment reliability. That makes yep. sense to me, Monica. Yep. That's exactly, that's exactly what it is. This is, uh, if we talk about the, these components, right. We call, we refer to it as technology, not, it doesn't have to be like yeah. a computer. It could be a coaching program. It could be a prescription. Like this, this is all considered technology, right? And so here's the issue. When you buy a coaching program or you get advice from somebody like Bradley, who's been there and done that, right? I am almost, I'm about, nothing's perfect. I'm 99% sure that the reliability of that technology that like Bradley's program is greater than your actual human behavior within the system, which means, so go ahead and go back to, let's say we got 0.9. We'll create a new one. Just create an entirely new system. Yep. Let's say you got a 90% perfect coaching program, right? And you only follow it to the T. I mean, step by step, wake up at this time, go to bed at this time. Like for me, I eat the same amount of food every day, right? It's a behavior thing. Your human behavior, let's say it's 60%, which is very, very generous because most people aren't even close to that. Yeah. And we're going to dig in. I want to dig in this a little bit because people go, I'm more than 60%, but I'll yeah. I keep going. Yeah. So go uh, multiplied by 0. 0.6. So that's 54% reliability. And what happens, even if, look, even if the technology was 100% perfect, yep. best you could possibly get from this scenario is 60% reliability. So it stands to reason that the limiting factor in almost every single system is actually the human behavior, which means, right, if, and I'm not, if, if you don't believe me, right, then you can do this. If you say, no, this program sucks, it's not my behavior, do this. Do exactly to the T what you are supposed to go to bed at the exact same time, wake up at this time. If you're supposed to reach out to 10 people on Messenger, do that. If you're supposed to have five phone calls, do that. Do exactly what is prescribed for like three months. And then you can judge the efficacy of the other components in the system. This is what I find. Yeah, this is fascinating because here's what I find with new coaches not being in a program. Now, you and I know, you and you know my program as well as anybody, maybe as well as I do at this point. We both know this works. This is how I got to my floor of full time. And I, I'm not a guy who throws out numbers, but you think about how many thousand dollars you need a month. I got there full time and it works for my clients when they, when they work it, they enroll their first clients and can do that consistently, but I'll talk with people and they'll be like, yeah, but I don't want to do that. And that's the limiting factor is I just don't, yeah, but I don't want to do that. Whatever that is. So you can. Having a plan and following up. A lot of people go, well, look, I got Nick's plan, whether it be exercise or diet or whatever, but this plan sucks. And like, if you are not going to do in real life what I do every single day, you're the limiting factor, which is why. And here's the beautiful thing. The, the most beautiful, liberating thing to me is you can have a plan that is only 70% perfect and your behavior is still the limiting factor. And it doesn't matter. You could pay more money for a better plan. And there's going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny increase in reliability. Or you can actually modify your behavior and do what your doctor prescribed or what your coach tells you to do or what this training says. And there will be a massive increase in your results and reliability. Right? Right. So it's just like, uh, and, and what that means for new coaches, right? Is because it's it's very very common for new coaches, especially. It's just like people when they first start working out, or they first, they're kind of looking for a magic pill or a magic program, and uh, 
Yep. Change your behavior. That's it. And so if you're in Bradley's program, for example, or you're in any of my programs, you have no right to judge the efficacy of that program. If you're not actually, if your behavior is a limiting factor. Yeah. So and, this is interesting because you, you know, you and I have done a training for your vault on the natural enrollment method and it's complex. You yep. got to be doing this and then you've got to be, you, I mean, all the things you have to do for anybody, if you want to see it, just go into unit four. It's complex. And if you aren't doing all of those things, it won't work. If you are doing all of those things, it will work. The interesting thing is you can be doing all those things at like 0.50% and still enroll clients. Yeah, there's just a, there we go. I was making a note. Um, no worries. Yeah. And that's the big thing. Like there are people here's, here's the worst thing. I use a gym analogy. You could use a dog training analogy. You could use any where people go in and they're like, well, that person's doing this wrong or that person should be, but they still look really good or they're still making a lot of money because they're actually doing the same freaking thing every day. Right. Right. And that's reliable. And like a fortune favors the reliable um and so hopefully that makes sense uh i see some comments here true that works if you work um and this is not by any means and and i just want to throw this out there because uh you know uh donna said work works if you work it which is true but i'm telling you that like doing doing what uh what, what's in coach launch right like doing hey follow you follow those instructions to a T and you will have success and you will figure out what reliably, what kind of income you're going to have, whatever, but it's not, it's not like work harder or grind your face off or do more hours. It's not like change your behavior in a way that like you have to freaking work like I do or whatever, but it's just like, just do the things you're supposed to do. That's it. That's it. It's, I mean, it's not complicated. Yeah. And the things you, the things you have to do to move your business forward are not overwhelming. You know, there are times in your business where it takes a little more work, but uh, it's not. It's That's not, interesting too, because overwhelming is so subjective, Nick, in the sense that what's overwhelming for me isn't going to be overwhelming for you and vice versa, because we, we both everyone has their own junk that they are resistant to doing. Some yep. people are like, yeah, I don't mind at all putting my content on my personal profile and sharing my knowledge and being a leader. And, and someone else will feel overwhelmed by that because their personal preferences, I'd rather not put myself out there. Yeah. But well, to me, overwhelming is all about what's your personal preference. Well, I prefer it to be yeah. easy. Well, then everything's going to be overwhelming. And that that's exactly, it's expectation management. And I'm just telling you, like, there's this level of acceptance and it might sound harsh. It might not. I, I work really hard. I work really hard on not sounding harsh because you know how I can speak with finality and like, typically I'm pretty concise and people think it's harsh. Um, there are things I want. There are so many things in this world that I sit back and I go, man, I really want that. But I also am aware enough to say, I'm just not willing to do the things. And you know what? That doesn't make fortune favors the reliable. It's true. It doesn't make, uh, it doesn't make, so let's say this program, right? Like if it's an MLM or, or some sketch or some, some program you're not comfortable doing, like maybe you don't want to do direct sales, Kyle says, I don't mind sharing my knowledge just to personal outreach, which I know I have to get over. Yeah. And that's it, right? Like I want this outcome and it has been proven over and over and over that this is the path you have to walk. And if you're not willing to walk that path, then that's fine. But you don't get a bitch that the path doesn't work. Right. You're not willing to put one foot in front of the other across the path. And that's perfectly fine. There's no judgment from me. Bradley doesn't judge people either. And it's just like, you have to understand 
my behavior is a limiting factor. I'm either going to change it or I'm not. But pro, if that's the, I'll save you all a whole bunch of time and money right now. If that is the case, stop trying to find new pro, stop purchasing new programs because those aren't the limiting. You can change that program out. It could be 100% reliable, 50% reliable. It could be absolute garbage. It won't matter because your behavior is a limiting factor anyway. Yeah. 100%. And I love the analogy of um, nutrition with this. And it goes back to what you said, like the intention of the complexity of that feedback loop, you know, it depends on what your intention is. If I prefer to eat the things I like, and I want to be healthy and have lots of energy, there's a really good chance that those are in contention with each other. I can't just eat whatever I like to whatever amount I like all the time. I can't just eat Oreos all the time and expect to have any kind of nutritional value. I just can't do it. Yep. But here's so going to be thing. okay. If, if I really want to live longer and have energy to run around with my daughters and grow my business, I have to just let go of my preference to eat whatever I want and make that shift and be okay. Plenty of ways to do it. To me, this is what, my, a lot of mindset coaches do is they just help people shift how they feel. I don't mean that in a slight, that's very powerful. Yep. And there there's, here's the other, the other really cool thing when you work this out, right? These are the things I have to do today, whatever it may be, right? I yeah. want to look good, feel good, make money. So I have to wake up at this time, do these activities in my business, work out at this time, do these activities in my business, whatever. And here's the thing. Most often we kind of miss one of those things during the day, right? And this is a liberating thing. And that this is where freedom comes from. Like Bradley, you, you spend time with me. The, the, the biggest reason people really want to work with me is because they see how much freedom I have in pretty much yeah. everything I do because I've set these parameters, which means, okay, uh, did I do my shit today? If yes, cool. I don't have to stress. There's no guilt. There's no shame. I don't have to do more because I just have to do the thing I did today for the next 30 days in a row before I even can gauge if, if I should, you know, what the efficacy is. If I didn't, well, then I don't have to worry about adding new stuff because tomorrow I have to do that stuff I didn't do today. Right. And what that means is that you don't just keep piling on your to-do list. You just figure out how to do the fundamentals. And then you actually, and you know, I do this with nutrition too, like exercise as well. You actually end up with a ton of free time and a ton of wiggle room and you have room to eat some Oreos. You know, as long as you know that I did these basic things today, I can fill the rest with kind of whatever I want. And as your coaching business grows and you make more money and you can hire people to do those things, you get more and more free time. Uh, but if you do not understand that your behavior is the driving force, it's not technology. It's not the program. It's not this episodic. Well, I worked really hard today, so I'm going to take tomorrow off. Right? Like it's, it's this ongoing thing. Once you understand that, you get a lot of freedom because your only goal, let's say I did four of the six things that I really needed to do today. Yep. Like then tomorrow I just have to do five. I don't have to add new stuff. I don't have to find a new program. I don't have to do the stuff I did today twice as much tomorrow. And then this is just the, it compounds. And that's, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you where I see that with, um, coach launch clients, people will resist until I help them work through the resistance and they start doing all the things they need to do together. And it's, it's like, it's, it really is a little bit like an orchestra. You get all of the instruments playing together and you get a beautiful sound, right? You, that beautiful sound, it's the tune of one, two, three new clients. And it's like, it's almost like clockwork. You get to a certain point in the program, we work through your resistance and boom, boom, boom. You, want, you enroll three new clients. Yep. And then the first question people ask is, okay, what do I do now? Like there's this new thing 
that they have to figure out because now they have three clients and yep. no, you just have to stay reliable with the same thing that in, got you to transforming three lives. You just, you have to keep doing that work reliably over and over and over and over again. And that turns to three, six, 10, 20, 30, 50. Yeah. So think oh, about, most, think about this. Like, go, Oh, I need to add something now. Every, everything you add, go back to the math we did in the beginning. Everything you add reduces the reliability, right? Which means you pretty much get less bang for your buck. Every new component you add, the returns begin to diminish. So you got to think like, okay, I did these things. I got three clients this month, right? The highest leverage, productive and profitable, we're talking about productivity and profitability, thing you can do is the same thing. And if you get three clients again, you do it again. And what happens at the end of the year is, especially if they stick with you, right? There's a retainer. You have 36 clients in the most productive, profitable way possible. Because every new component you add will reduce profitability. That's fine because diminished returns are still returns. Yep. But if you don't have to do extra work for less money, then don't. And the chances are if you raise your behavior to match the level of whatever technology you're using, we already know Facebook's going to work tomorrow. It's reliable. Right. We know that Bradley's program works. That's reliable. And so if you raise your behavior up to the level of the reliability of Facebook and coach launch, that is the most productive, profitable thing you can do, period. And that's, it's just math. Okay. So Kyle, I want to hit Kyle's question because it's a good one. And we are going to open this up to Q and A. I don't know how much time you have left, Nick, but <clears throat> I got 25 minutes. Kyle says, but fear drives people to keep trying new shit, right? No, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that that's the case. Here's, here's keeps <laughs> fear. Fear stops people from trying new stuff. Honestly, uh, there's a lot of people that tinker within their uh, being distracted is not new stuff. Right. So I, I guess it's a matter of semantics, but uh, fear keeps people it, it keeps them, they rather play with the devil they know. And uh, so yeah. they, they will, it's not that they'll, I don't think fear drives people to keep trying new shit. I think fear keeps people busy in their comfort zone so they don't have to step outside of it because you know what? Your first three clients is cool. And the truth is when you get there, um, taking on, I just had somebody message me about something similar. Taking on the next three is scary. And then the next three, like when you realize like, oh, I have responsibility now in a business and this isn't just a hobby anymore. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. You, people do derail, derail themselves. Um, because intellectually in theory, they want more clients, but deep down the thought of being responsible for 12, you know, 12 people's stuff can freak you out yeah they freak you out and they sabotage yeah so don asked raise your behavior to fill in the blank um which brings up a great point so what would you say nick raise your behavior to what uh it's a relative yeah so here's here's a really here's a very very important concept with uh system reliability and systems thinking absolute numbers don't matter because we think about the the product, right? Like uh, 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0.9. There's an exponential increase or decrease when you go down. So if you add one client, raise your price $100 and get them to stay one more month, those are little increases, but there's a huge increase in revenue, right? So the absolute numbers don't matter. You can put a big fat absolute number in one area um, and it won't have a huge impact. Whereas the, the point being, in a, in a complex system like uh, like the human body, right? Yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm just a roundabout way of getting to where we're trying to get. In a complex system, if a 400-pound man loses 10 pounds, 
it's that's like water weight it's fluctuation right yep but if a 105 pound woman loses 10 pounds <laughs> right it's alarming yep. Yep. she's gonna go to the hospital so that absolute number in a complex system doesn't mean anything it's relative so the answer is not raise your behavior to blank it's simply raise your behavior yeah relative to where you are now and yeah and i would say so here's the thing new coaches and donna this you know this will make sense hopefully this will make sense there's so much complexity with new coaches because um they don't know who to trust and they haven't quite realized yet that eventually they're going to have to invest in a program and stick with it and get support. Mm -hmm. Now that's not sexy to say the guy who's selling a coaching program to say, you're going to have to invest in a coaching program. is supposed to be a huge taboo, but I feel like it serves. It doesn't have to be my program. I'm just telling you if you're a new coach and you're afraid to invest, then don't ask for money when you are coach people for free. Yep. If that's what you're expecting, then that's what you need to do for your potential clients. It's never going to work. So, but here's what happens. Let's say they pick one program that's got five components, right? And they do one, two, and maybe the fourth component. And, and it's, by the way, this is all free. And then they've got another program that they're coming, that they're like, oh, I'll go to this guy's free group and I'll do one, two, three. There's six components to that. And I like this one and this one and this one. And then this one only has four and I like that and that the level of complexity and let's just say for average each of these programs is 0.7 like the level i can't even do that math yep. because now you're multiplying all these things together times your crappy human behavior just because you're bouncing all over the place yep and here here's the problem this is the biggest problem with gifted people like i i was i was stuck here forever i'm not gifted but i'm stubborn enough um you could do that and it might work, mm -hmm. but you will be on the hamster wheel forever because it's not reliable. It's not systematizable. It's not scalable. So if you want a business, you can't have what, what, you're, what we're looking at on the screen right now. And, and like I've, I've gone from zero to seven figures about five or six times now. I was doing the math the other day. Yep. Um, and seven to eight once almost twice will soon to be twice and i'm telling you right now that what you just what you just drew a piece of that with a piece of this combined with a piece of that thing over there it will it will fall apart and it, it it's actually it, it even goes beyond the human behavior thing because your, your human behavior is always a limiting factor yeah keep going but here you have three different systems that are not interrelated at all. And it adds to that. Like, so the whole point is, okay, look, these are the behaviors you have to take. And then the next step builds upon those behaviors. And the next step builds upon those behaviors. It's like cognitive behavior therapy, right? Can you actually do this? Prove you can do this. And then I'll give you the layer. And now what you're doing when you have two or three different programs pieced together is you don't even have that layering. You have like, because yeah. the point is layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. And what you have is layer one, another layer one, a different layer one. There's no progression. There's no, yeah. right? All these moves are lateral. They're not vertical. And so program hopping, it just makes it even, it just makes your behavior even less reliable. I had a call with somebody this weekend. And at the end of the call, after talking, I just said they were in another program. Um. And, I, and I, my question was, did you do everything you needed to do in the program? And the answer was no. And my response was, before we work together, go back and do everything in that program. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not going to do any, everything in my program, I just will guarantee you it's not going to work that well. Yep. And if the human behavior is, now it's different because they're different programs. Some programs won't work for other people, you know, it takes all kinds. That's fine. So, you know, but that wasn't the case. It was a, it was a human behavior issue. Yeah. It almost always, it's almost always a user error. Yeah. So to answer your question, Donna, your original question, Donna, the answer is you don't need to think about anything. If you know the system, you just have to 
fall in love with the process and work the process. Stop asking the question, what's holding me back and do the work over and over and over again and fall in love with the work. And then you will fall in love with the work and you'll look up and you'll be like, oh, I've got 12 clients yep. that I'm working with now because I'm not hopping around. I'm just doing the work. You'll, you'll find a lot of the people that seem to have overnight success. Um, I'll, I'll give you guys an example, just real world context. When we launched Mastery Mode, a brand new program, right? We went from zero to a hundred grand a month in like seven months. Right. It's beautiful. And so that seems like, Whoa, what process was that? Like, mm -hmm. teach me that. And I say, okay, well, we're going to have to go back about four years. When I started doing the things that cultivated the relationship and yada, yada, yada. Like, so we have this illusion that like sometimes somebody maybe has been um, doing something for five or six years for free, then they open a coaching business and boom, overnight, they've, they have all these clients and we think that that should be us. But if we haven't been doing the work for four or five years, right, yeah. it's just an expectation thing. And so yeah. you, you just show up and do the work. And so the people that have been overnight successes have often been doing the work for years and years and years. Um, but that's a behavior thing. Like You also go find people because we have people in our ecosystem like John Rowley, right? And yep who had like five, 10, $20 million months. And he looks back and says, I had no idea what I was doing. I would have done it different. But if you can get to 20 million on accident, just by showing up, then it stands to reason that just showing up all the time is still higher leverage than knowing exactly what to do. Yep. Yep. But again, you're just talking to, you're talking about human behavior. So in terms of what we're talking about today, the one thing to focus on for more productivity and more profitability is actually your behavior, not a better system, get your behavior straight and then get a better system or find the best system, the best process, the, per, the person you trust and execute with the best human behavior you have. And you don't have to do as well as the, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as the person next to you. Sounds like I'm getting emotional, but I got a dry throat. <clears throat> you don't have to do as well as the person next to you. You just have to do your best behavior. All right, I'm gonna pull this down, Nick, and I'm gonna, let's go to Q&A, are you cool with that? Yep. And then wrap yep. up. Cause yeah, I got about 14 minutes and I got a call with my CEO and COO, Dan and Brian. Boom. All right. Let me just stop the share. That way we don't go crazy uh, with that loop. <laughs> All right. So. Now I'm just going to your screen. There we go. There we, there we you got is. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Okay. So let, let's do let's do Q and A. Um, I'm going to uh, open this up so I can see where people are at. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. Let's do Q and A. I'm ready for it. All right. What do you? What questions do you all have? I'll tell you guys while, while we're waiting, one, one, a really good way to calibrate this is, Bradley, what's the first thing people do, um, the first daily activity when they come to coach launch, direct, uh, go into groups, friend people, and... Yeah, but the first, the very first thing we do uh, before any of that is we work on their, we focus and messaging. Mm -hmm. We niche down, we get them focused, and we get them deep inside the head and the heart of their potential client. Yeah. And so the question then is not what more can I do? What other coaching program? Who, how, how do I run YouTube ads? What should my videos look like? Right. It's, did I do everything I could today to get in the heads and hearts of my prospect? If the answer is yes, cool, chill out, go have some fun, drink a beer, whatever. If no, do better tomorrow. And that's it. That's how you calibrate. For me, it's okay. This is what I need to accomplish today. 
Um, if it was join three groups and send five messages or whatever, did I do that? If yes, cool. If no, I should probably sit down and freaking do it. Yep. Not go find other ways to distract it's, myself. It's, yep. And that's, and with that in mind, with that goal, all you say is uh, productivity and profits, my thing these days. Um, and you say, is this going to make me more productive in reaching that particular goal? If no, don't do it. If yes, great. And it just becomes a series of, is this going to make me more productive? Is this going to make me more profitable? Yep. If no, I don't do it. And it, it saves me a lot of time and effort. And like, you know, I, I learned like a million different ad platforms just because I didn't have those, those parameters in my yeah. mind. And now I'm way more productive and way more profitable. And frankly, I just like have to sit around and read and talk to people all day. Cause once, once your behaviors, once your behavior, once you learn how to make your behavior, what it is supposed to be, and you get good at, you know, doing it most of the time. Um, you can start playing with other stuff like other programs, other technologies, other. Th um, and then you engage the efficacy of those things, right? Like, I wonder if this thing, this kind of diet actually works. And since I have a propensity to be 100% on my diet, I can actually make that judgment. Right. Um, but until, until you're there, like, just do the freaking thing you're supposed to do every day. All right. Let us know if you're still with us. We still got quite a few people here. Uh, just say like, yep, still with you. So I can know I'm actually trying to figure out right now, Nick, if, uh, if I got cut out of my own loop <laughs> on, uh, I anything. don't, yeah, I don't see anything new popping in. Okay. I'm, I'm on the, I'm on your page. I'm looking at your page. Yeah. I'm looking at my page and I'm looking at the group. Somebody say, Hey, what's up? Just want to make sure that you're all still there. And yeah. yeah, look at that. Sherry's like here. Beautiful. Monica says, yep. Okay. Do you have any questions about any of this or anything? We've got Nick for a couple more minutes. Um, but especially around product and uh, productivity and profitability. When you're the greatest limiting factor in what you're doing. All right. So cool. People are still with us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it, the, the truth is if this is laid out appropriately, which you did a great job of of introducing and, and framing, right? Um, the questions are not, which is good. I really think it's good. The questions aren't going to be for me. They're, you should be sitting there having these conversations with yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like cause the, the question is, have I actually been doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And I can't answer that for you. Like Dave Richards, I have no idea if you've been doing what you're supposed to be doing. Marty, don't know. Richard, no idea. You know, so I think the conversation is the dialogue is with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of what you're doing, man, you made a gracious offer. Um, I'm going to keep talking about it till the end of the month. Yep. Um, you offered for people to the end of the month if they join Coach Launch and start getting help for launching their business that you would do a couple things. One, you would put them in a room with a uh, six and seven figure. I think it might have even said eight figure business owners. Yeah. Um, like Jeff, Jeff, Jeff's 35 yeah. million, you know? Yeah. Jeff Moore. Yeah. Um, so actually get in a room with them, ask questions, connect with them. Um, there's something to be said for getting around people where, they're, what they're doing is almost so unbelievable that you get to reach out and go like, oh no, this is real. And these are real people and they weren't born on top of the mountain, right? And they're like, not necessarily IQ wise genius. I can't say for those folks who isn't, who isn't. I just know that isn't the biggest limiting factor, how smart you are. No, never. Based on what we just, just, based on this conversation. In fact, it doesn't matter how smart you are, who you know, when you're starting, it's what is your behavior level going to be? Um, that's, that's so, literally, there's a, we have a guy who has so much money, like it's disgusting. And that's, you know, if I say that, then the, that means you have a lot of money. That means he's got a lot of money. Bought two barrels of oil 
forever ago. Sold them, went back, bought four, sold them, went back, and now he owns like 15 or 20 gas stations in Tennessee and like yada, yada, yada. Not, not like, you know, Harvard grad just showed up and did the, th- the one thing that made sense at the time, which was get buy stuff and sell it for more. And then <laughs> literally do it again and again and again and again for 40 years. Yeah. I wasn't finding like, how do I run Facebook ads to, for people to buy oil from me? You know? Yeah. Like, hey, this worked. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it till it stops working. And now he has an empire of freaking owns oil. Like drug dealers do it all day. Yeah. And drug dealers are super successful. I really, you know, like there's so much of me that wishes that <laughs> they, not that I was a drug dealer, but yeah. uh, there's so, there's so much of me, like 50 cent, his story is actually really good. It is fascinating. There's so much that like, you just want to, take them and say use this for good um because man like if somebody just showed up every day like that with good intentions they would do a lot of good in the world yeah i I love emily's question i promised her that we would answer this question live thank you for saying it emily because i got so into this and what we're talking about that i forgot and my apologies emily says would you say behavior outweighs experience and education when it comes to success? Uh, to, I'm going to, I got five minutes, so I'm going to do my best here. Yep. I'll give you my opinion. One, what does success look like to you? You have to define success because if success is sitting in a room saying smart things, then yeah, I guess education matters. If success is helping a whole bunch of kids in a third world country, get cl- clean water, then it doesn't matter how much experience and education you have if you don't go over there and help the freaking kids. So defining success is step one. Uh, step two, behavior will always outweigh experience and education alone. There's a lot of intellectuals. Think of college professors that have a lot of experience in education And not a lot of people would consider them successful. Um, Experience, you don't get the experience or the education without the action anyway, right? So it's, here's, here's the most important thing I can tell anybody is that the world is not a snapshot. It's not a snapshot, right? We look right now and we say, okay, what's more important, experience, education, or my behavior? Because we feel like we have to pick one, right? as being most important. I think it's fair to say that experience and education are important, but right now your behavior is going to determine what kind of experience and education you get. There's this continuum of like, you can have your cake and eat it too, just not right now, right? You bake your cake first and then you eat it later. Like there's this continuum of um, you're not going to be everything to everyone right now. But again, your behavior will determine what kind of experience you have. You can't sit around and say, well, experience is more important. You yeah. don't get experience without your, be- your, your behavior determines your experience, right? So it, there's just this, it goes back to like, life is not a straight line. It's, it yeah. works in circles. So behavior, experience, education, which changes your behavior, which gives you a different experience. That experience gives you a different education, which changes your behavior, right? That's just the, that, that's how complex systems work is, is a, it's a feedback loop. And in the context of Emily's question that she asked earlier today, mm-hmm. her context was more along the line. That's a good question, Emily, by the way. Yeah. The context of her question is, should I go back and get more schooling or should I start coaching people? Do you okay. want? I got that right, Emily. Uh, if that's the question, then I propose to you, what does success look like? Does success look like sitting in a room intellectually understanding things, which is fine. Or does success look like going, being the boots on the ground, helping people. And that's, here's, here's what I will tell you is that most, most college professors at Ivy league schools, even don't typically have the skill of actually helping people. They know how to be technically right, but they have a very hard time meeting people where they're at with this proactive empathy. 
and helping them change their behavior, right? And so those are two different things. Being an expert in something and being a really, really good coach and advisor are two different things. Yeah. And so what does success look like? Do you want to be the world's foremost expert on this thing and write research papers and then let coaches take that research and turn it into practical application for their clients? Or do you want to be the one that is the, that, that is working directly with people, helping them change their behavior? Yeah. Um, they are. And I'd say for me, because I finished my college undergrad work, I went to grad school and I dropped out. Right. So Emily, f- for your question, if your question is, and I'm making, I'm going to make some she assumptions. Said, she said it's correct and absolutely love this. To me, success is helping people. Right. No, you don't have to go get a degree to start helping people. What I had a massive amount of school loans for my undergrad degree. I made in two months as a coach enough to pay off my school loans. Yep. After for 20 years, not being able to put a dent in my school loans from what I was earning from my college degree. You do not need to have the college degree or be certified to coach. I don't have, I don't have a college degree. I didn't finish. You do have to have consistent human behavior. You have to care about people if you're going to work with me because it's just, it's just the natural moment method is only sustainable long-term if you care about people. And um, you have to get your stories straight with money, with yourself, in relationship to other people. It's all stuff we work on. Um, but you don't even have to have all that figured out before you start going. I got I to gotta run. I got 10 o'clock. It. You guys are awesome. Thank Appreciate you. it, man. If you guys Hit have me. any more questions, drop them in here. Nick's around. Hit me with this replay when you get a chance. You got it. Thanks, everybody. Um, hope you all enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoy talking. Sometimes I'll just call Nick when he's free just to jam because he's a good guy. Um, Emily, I hope that answers your question. Okay. If success is helping people, I would say start helping people and get paid to do it. You can get paid to help people. In fact, it's, it's best that people make the investment. It's probably the quickest, biggest lesson I learned from my former work where I was on salary helping people and then I was paid directly by them is the people who were paying for their help took things seriously, their human behavior level raised because they had invested in it. You're all, Donna, you're welcome. Monica, you're welcome. Marty, you're welcome. Um, All right, you're all fantastic people. Love having you here. Um, If you found this helpful, let other people know. Bring them into the group. Ask them. Say, hey, you should you should check out this group. Claudia, thanks for being here. Patrick, Patrick. (laughs) This was stuck behind my refrigerator. Thank you for this Starbucks card. I just got it out last night when my cat was playing around. Maybe she stuck it behind there. So I will be taking my daughters to Starbucks and I will send you a picture, brother. But thank you for this, man. That, that got lost and now it's on my desk. So we're good to go. <laughs> Emily, if you've been helping people for free, it's time to start charging. If you don't know how to do that, let's have a conversation. Also check out the units. The units, um, we talk about a lot of that. Uh, any last thoughts that any of you have that you would like to jam on before we go. Beth says, thank you. Awesome, Richard. Absolutely. Any last questions? You can always drop questions in the group. I will leave this replay up. If you would like a copy of the PDF of what I was drawing, I'm happy to send that to you too. Or maybe I'll just put it in the group here. Um, Happy to show you how that works. All right, everybody. Be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. That is not hard. Just be you. We'll talk to you later.